Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to have a look at the brand new properties panel and I think that this changes everything. If you haven't already installed the latest version of Premiere Pro version 25 and you're not in the middle of a project, jump into your uh, Creative Cloud desktop and update Premiere Pro because it includes the new properties panel, which is the biggest fundamental change in the way that Premiere Pro has ever operated. Instead of having specific panels for specific jobs, one panel, the properties panel, now will serve tons of different jobs, makes everything faster, makes new users go to one place for most operations. Okay, I'm gonna show you where it is, how to get it, um, what's different, some tips about working in, in multiple selections because for the first time now we can have multiple things selected and make changes, working with titles, working with graphics, working with captions, and working with uh, different size of photos on the timeline. Let's go have a look. In the window menu, I've already got it open. Here it is, the properties panel. And if you reset your uh, workspaces and you can show the names, show the name, reset the workspace. Once you reset the workspace, it shows up for essentials and for the starter workspace and the properties panel will now be there. You can uh, put it anywhere you want and then you can save it to uh, an existing workspace if you've got a custom workspace and you want to add it. So it simply means you can now select something on the timeline and you can get all of these settings. So with just this one clip selected, I get fill and fit, position, anchor point, scale, rotation, opacity, and crop. You can now crop directly in um, a clip without having to add the crop effect. The crop effect is still there, how come? Well, sometimes the order of operations is important, like having crop before or after the transform effect. That's still very important. If we select a caption like we have here, we can now get to the caption information. And also notice whenever we're in here, this little three dot um, menu shows up. And when you click on it, it has a specific uh, setting for what you're clicking on. So if I'm back on this video here and I clip, then you'll see more choices like adjust color, which is going to bring up Lumetri panel, advanced effects controls, which is going to open up the effects controls, uh, browse effects and transitions, which is gonna bring up the effects, browse graphic templates, which is going to bring up the graphic templates that we're used to. So if we wanted to, we could now drag one of these uh, over here. Uh, this tends to be a big one. It takes uh, a moment for it to arrive, but it's the exact same operation as before, but instead of it being called the essential graphics, it's now graphics templates. So Adobe has separated those two, and I think it's a great idea because for me, I would hardly ever go to the templates. I would use titles that I would make. So now look over here, we've got this title. And if I click on that title, back in the properties panel, this happens to be an After Effects Mogurt. And you can see all the settings that we need for that Mogurt. If you want to drag more, you drag them from the graphics template over here. So that's another great use for the properties panel. I'm just going to get rid of that. All right, well, what about regular text? So this is a, a text object created before it used to be called the essential graphics. Now this is just a text uh, graphic in the timeline. And I've added a little bit of uh, film export transitions on here. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna turn off my uh, uh, captions and they pop in with a little glitch and they wander around. Now, what if I wanted to change all of these and I haven't changed, I haven't added a style because you can have a style and change it, but I didn't do that. I just want all of those to be a different color and a different font. Oh, this is so good. Select them all, go to the properties panel and everything that is similar between these is selectable. 
So I'm going to change this to a different uh, font. And a different color, make it a little bit easier to see. Click OK, and now all of them are changed. Properties panel, baby, so much nicer. What about um, audio? So if I select this audio down here, volume and mute comes up. I can't tell you how many times I've used this now. So many times I just want to quickly turn it down instead of trying to drag a line or hit the, the keyboard. I just want to turn it down. What if I select two of them? Well, I selected two of them and notice the number is disappeared and there's just a line. This happens when you've selected two things that have two different values to them. So the bottom one is set at negative 11.5 and the top one is negative 10. So if I select them both and click, I could add a number like minus 10. Now it shows up because they're both the same. But if I want to keep them different, but change them a little, if I click and drag on here, now I'm changing them both by this value. So now this one is negative 14 and this one is negative 16.4. So Adobe was really smart about that because you don't have, you're not forced to make things the same. Keep them in the same place, but move them each relative to their sound or position or opacity or whatever setting that shows up in here. All right, now I'm gonna make my timeline smaller here because I wanna show you working with multiple objects over top. Now this, I've got four clips stacked on top of each other and I want to work with those. So I'm going to just hit that spot there and uh, play this. Okay, so I'll select all of them, go to scale, and now I'm scaling all of them. Although it looks only like one, they're all selected. So the, the top one is hiding all the others. So if I hit this to 50%, and then deselect and select just one. Notice this new button over here to either transform or crop. What does that mean? It gives me the opportunity to click and drag. I also have this enabled and if you hit the plus button and drag it down if you don't have it, this is the snap in program window. So now I'm snapping that in there. I didn't have to do any math. I didn't have to do any of that. I now have four quadrants up there that easy. Ooh, I love that. Okay, well, what about four vertical? Hmm, now we're gonna have to do a bit of math. So I'll go back to selecting all of them and change the scale back to 100%. And I'll crop this on the left and on the right. And if I want four, that means each one is 25%. So I have to crop 75% out, but I don't want to crop 75% out of one side. I want to crop half of 75 and half of 75. Quick, do some math. I don't want to do any math. Let Premiere Pro do the math. Left, I'll click in here and type 75 divided by two, enter. Oh, there it is. It's 37.5. So I'll put that in the right, 37.5. Now they're all set up correctly. This gets a little jumbled. Let me just zoom out and show you that if we are clicking on these here, you can see that it's outside this area. And it gets a little bit harder to select it. Just because I've cropped them doesn't mean selecting outside of the crop won't select it. It's still selecting. So it gets a little bit tough to select these things. So I tend to use the numbers on the in the properties panel. So I'll go back to fitting this and move these with position over here. And oh. Let me, uh, yeah, I'm going to reset that and then just move that over. Go to the next one, reset that, move it over. Go to the bottom one, reset, 
and then move that over. Now I specifically have a problem with one of these clips and you'll see it in a second. And that's her over here. The, the sides being cropped, she's over on one side. So for her, I'm gonna have to change her and I'll just find her. Oh, she is the first ones over there. So for her, I will put 75 on the right. So for this one, I did have to crop that whole thing out. So now when I bring her over, now we get her centered in the frame. All right. That's so much easier than have to, having to, well, I don't I tell you how hard something like this was before. This is a little bit easier to see what's going on uh, with each one of them. I've got them all selected and you can see I've already got them scaled relative. And if I rotate them, they're rotating them. Um, and again, you'll see the numbers that are different have the dashes in them. So I can move them over if I want. I can move them up and down. So much easier. And if you click on one, unfortunately you can't do this with multiple ones, but if you click on one, you do have the ability to add a keyframe. So I could add a position keyframe here for this one, move ahead and drag that over here. And then you can jump between the keyframes here. Of course, you can go to the effects controls and uh, see them in here if you want. It's just another way of working with that. But you know, sometimes you just want two quick keyframes, one at the beginning, one at the end. You don't even have to go to the effects control panel. Um, adjust speed, you'll see this now show up uh, for video and for these kinds of clips. So if, if I go back to one of the uh, clips that we have here, adjust speed, this is a quick way to get to speed, which you would normally have to right click and choose speed duration. So that's right there. Again, look for these little things up here, these little cues. Um, you know, when nothing's selected here, I could create a new graphic. So depending on what you've got selected or not selected, you'll see that show up um, in the properties panel. Now here's another one that I like. I've got a whole bunch of photos in here and I've got an empty timeline. I'll drag all of these photos and what happens when you do that? Well, these aren't video size, they're just random photo size. Some are portrait, some are landscape, some are high resolution, medium, low resolution. This job before was tedious having to select and, and fit them in. Two options. Fill and fit. So watch this. I'll select all of them. Back in the properties panel, fill and fit. You can kind of see what it's going to do with the um, icons. I'm going to show you fit first because this is typically an Adobe kind of thing. Um, oh, you want to fit. Great. We fit in, but we're not cropping anything. That means it fits to it till it hits the top. You can see that's the top right there or it fits and hits the side if it's a horizontal one. So it doesn't fill that frame. That's what this one is for, fill the frame. Oh, so much better. But it can still have issues like him. I don't think he's centered perfectly, so I would select him and maybe move him down. These are good. And a good idea here is go to the sequence menu Selection follows playhead. This is a good one to uh, isolate, select the clip so you can move it around. Now I can only go so far with her. Oh, now you see that one's way off. So I've got to move her down. If you add the shift key when you drag these numbers, um, you can move that a little bit easier. Now I can't scale this anymore. I can't zoom her out without showing a bit of the edges. So there, the, the restriction is in the media there. There we go, there we go. Oh, and she can come down. 
And again, if I wanted to, I could click in here and move it around, hold shift and I'm moving it up and down this way. There we go. So something that would have taken you quite a few minutes just to mess around, a couple of clicks, a couple of corrections, and I've got what I want and it is done. So this is it, this is huge, and this is only the beginning. We're only seeing some of the settings in properties. We still have to go to the effects controls for the effects, but Adobe is going to be adding more and more and more to this whole design. They've been looking at this and a whole bunch of us have been beta testing this stuff for quite a long time and they've been getting feedback. And I applaud Adobe for making this big, big change because wouldn't it be great to finally get rid of the effects controls, the effects control panel completely, and have keyframes in the timeline? Ooh, there's still a lot of discussion about that with, uh, between editors. Some say yes, some say no. We'll see what happens with that. But I think this is great. I can't believe how quickly I've incorporated the properties panel into the way I'm working now. Especially, I never thought I would use volume that much, but I'm just working. Ah, Quick, oh, it's too loud. Oh, it's great. I love it. Can you tell I'm excited? Hopefully you're excited. So go update if you're not in the middle of a project and uh, install it, latest version of Premiere Pro. This is great. It's only gonna get better thanks to Adobe for listening to everyone and bringing this new paradigm shift to our favorite video editing application. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more, you can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop. You can uh, buy my split screens. Those split screens that you've seen, there's 52 sets of 50s with animations. Check them out. They're only 20 bucks each. Um, and there's lots of free stuff for you to download. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get all excited and uh, show you some of the brilliant new things that are in Premiere Pro.